Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be doing something a little different on this review. We are going to do an unboxing. We are going to do a full specs, but on the right portion of this, you're going to see me actually haul two five gallon jugs of water. That's something I normally have to do every couple of weeks, fill up water for the house. I usually have to take my truck and find a place to park and put it all in there, but this made it a lot more fun. And it was very impressive on how the Rad Runner 3 Plus handled pulling 80 pounds about an extra seven miles after we filled it up because we went to breakfast and then we came back home and I drugged that thing all the way back up and mostly uphill bringing the water jugs up. So take a look at that. After the unboxing, make sure you watch the ride portion and then the full specs. See why the Rad Runner 3 Plus has actually gone to among the top bikes I would recommend when somebody asks what bike should I look for when looking for an e-bike because the versatility of this is really amazing. One thing I may not have mentioned earlier later in the video is that it does actually have a riding range of rider heights from 411 to 62. So it can fit a lot of range of people because of the way that this bike is built. It also can hold up to 350 pounds of payload on the bike itself. That means rider and on the rack. And as well, you can actually haul an extra 100 pounds on the trailer itself. So you have a 450 pound payload total when you add it all together. It's an impressive bike, very well tuned. And you know, it's also an American based company. So you do have opportunities, a lot of places to go out and have these bikes repaired or serviced if you need to. There is one thing that was really impressive to me about a few years back when looking into a bike, I went to my local e-bike shop and asked them, what bikes do you guys repair or get in a lot that you like or don't like or what are some things I should know about? And the first thing he said, he said, you know, he's very impressed with the rad bikes. He didn't sell rad bikes, but when I looked down his service line, he had a bunch of them there not for repair. They were there because they were ridden so much, they just needed upgrading and maintenance like any other bike. He said the mileage people put on them, they love them, and he said they're easy to fix. They had no problems with the maintenance on them, and he highly recommended rad bikes, even though he didn't sell them. That was a really interesting thing to me. So this is, after a few years of actually doing reviews, this is the first rad bike that I've actually gotten to do a review on, and I am absolutely, like I said, blown away. Love the bike itself, Rad Runner 3 Plus. You can find more information about it at ebikeproducts.com slash radrunner. That'll take you directly to the website. That is an affiliate link, but um, if you do decide to make a purchase using that link, it does go to support this channel. That's greatly appreciated. But for now, let's get started in the video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the review. Okay, being that Rad Power Bikes is the number one seller of e-bikes in the United States, it's no surprise that they had a really detailed instructions on how to put together their bikes after the unboxing. So the first thing you saw me do was I actually put flat out tire sealant in the tires of the e-bikes on every bike that I have because of the amount of thorns that we have on our bike trails. Once I put the flat out tire sealant in, I installed the front tire. Then I put the fender and headlight on as per the instructions, unwrapped the rest of the protective covering on the bike, and then made adjustments to everything that I needed to to make sure I had the most comfortable ride possible, and then decided to go ahead and add all of my accessories before my first ride. Now the week after that, I took out the trailer and put that together, which was very simple to do. The instructions again are very clear, put flat out tire sealant into those trailer wheels as well, just to make sure I don't get flats on that, and then hooked up the trailer to the bike 
per the instructions, and then added some straps to make sure that when I was ready to put my load on, I had everything ready and I was ready to go. All right, so I'm stepping up to the Rad Runner 3 Plus, and this bike, I gotta say, is something that has really taken me by surprise. I gotta admit, I wasn't really knowing what to expect. This is the first Rad bike that I've actually had a chance to review. I've test ridden some and rented some in the past, and um, I am utterly blown away by how well tuned this bike is and what it does. I mean, this is, as you can see, it's a utility bike, okay? I mean, it, it has a cargo rack that's really strong in the back here. You can actually put a second rider. There's a ton of accessories for it. And the first thing I did was I put a trailer that could, uh, you know, pull stuff around and put it to a test and fill my water bottles without having to take my truck or my car. It performed dreamily, I guess is the best way to put it. It was a great, great way for me to now realize that I can just jump on the bike, take it down, get my water bottles filled and, and bring it home without having to go ahead and drag my truck around and have everything strapped into the bed of the truck. I mean, I still have to strap it into this trailer here, but it's so much more fun uh, and it handles well. But one of the reasons why this thing runs so well is I gotta say they've actually used some of the better technology that's now available with controllers and it runs really really smooth it's a, such a fine-tuned machine and we're going to go over some of the specs here so first of all the gear ratio that we have here is 11 to 34 tooth and that's one thing that actually does make a really big difference that you don't have a lot of air pedaling now this bike is a class 2 and it is a true class 2 in fact once it hits that 20 mile an hour mark you can still get some pedal assistance it doesn't cut out the motor so it stays very smooth but you don't uh, typically you won't be able to exceed the 20 miles an hour unless you're pushing the bike harder which is what it's supposed to be that's the legal standard of it and rad being one of the biggest company e-bike companies in the united states i gotta suspect that they're gonna have to make sure that they keep their bikes within the class ratings that it's actually made for so this is a true 750 that means it peaks out at 750 watts and in fact even the uh, speedometer that we have here in fact, let me turn on the bike you'll see that there's actually, this might be a little hard because of the sun, but there's a little rating here that actually tells you how much wattage is being put out. And that wattage peaks out at 750. So it's a 750 watt bike and it is a true 750 peak. That means it probably is a nominal at about 500, but the way they have it tuned is so smooth and it's still, you feel all the power that, that you're gonna want out of a bike like this. It's, it's a utility bike that works really, really well. Uh, we have actually, I guess, our sticker rating in the back here that's under here. Let me see if I can see it from this side a little better. It says class 2, 20 miles per hour and 750 watts. And as you can look at here, all of these mounting points. Now, this, these straps here, I like carrying Velcro straps uh, for many different reasons. But one is that I can, like, if I have a lock, I can strap it to it. I don't have to worry about it. Velcro straps are super handy to have. Uh, so, but you have all these mounting points for so many different accessories. It has a passenger seat, you can put on pan, um, panniers and then also cargo boxes so that as a utility bike, it can be, it's so versatile and it rides like a regular bike. So that's one thing that's all I really like about it. The way that they tune this controller, and I'm going to say this probably a few more times throughout this review, the way that the controller is tuned almost feels like a torque sensor. So if anybody has been actually debating, should I get a torque sensor bike? Because that's a question I've been getting a little more is, hey, some of these other bikes are now having torque sensors in them. Is it worth getting that? And I got to say, with these newer technologies, the way that people are actually tuning their controller, I think, believe this is the controller under here. The way that these controllers are now being tuned, it, it almost feels like a torque sensor is because the way that you are pedaling the amount of power that's coming out, when you have a PS level one or two, it's only putting out a certain amount of wattage, no matter how fast you're going. So if you're going a little downhill and you pedal a little faster, you'll be able to go faster. Where in the past, a PS level one basically took you to seven to eight miles an hour and it just cut out the motor and then kept you at seven or eight miles an hour and that's all the motor will keep on going on and off. Well now, if you wanna go 18, 19, 20 miles an hour on PS one, you can. You can keep on pushing it and a little bit of wattage up to, I believe it's like 150 to two. I saw at PS level ones, you're getting that kind of wattage pushing the bike out no matter what speed you're going. So the gear ratio with an 11 tooth gearing on the low end at 20 miles an hour, you're not air pedaling. You actually are still able to push the bike and keep it going. And 20 miles an hour, now I proclaim myself to be kind of a speed demon. I like my class three bikes that go 28 miles an hour and plus, but 
20 miles an hour is more than adequate and it keeps you within the legal limits of most of the U.S. cities out here and, you know, the federal regulations. Anything that's a class three is technically not allowed on a lot of bike paths. So you have a, a bike that is completely street legal and anybody or any law enforcement that sees rad on it, they're going to know that these bikes are not, none of them are actually over the 750 limit that's actually claimed that it's going to be. Whereas some of the others, I would say, I wouldn't say they cheat, but they might kind of exaggerate what you get out of this. So keep on moving forward with this bike here or with the different specs that we have. This is a 3.3 inch tire. So I guess it still falls in the classification of a fat tire bike. So if you look at the width of this tire, it's not really fat, but it is wide enough to give you a lot of traction. They also made it very puncture resistant. Now I add flat out tires in it because as you can see in this background here, these plants here leave a lot of thorns on all of our bike paths in this area. And regardless of how puncture resistant tires might be, there's always the possibility that you're gonna get a flat with the way that our thorns are just so sharp in my area. So I do put extra sealant in them, but is it necessary? In most cases, probably not. These are actually really good tires and they have natural puncture resistance on them. Uh, Rad also includes this chain guard here. So a slap guard, so you don't have a lot of noise. With that, you have a plastic fender. Now, some people might not like the plastic fender because it's plastic, but personally, I like the fact, one, that it's lighter and it's silent. It doesn't make any noise. You also have this fender in the front and, you know, it's also plastic. There's no noise to it. Well, you don't have a tinging or a clanging of any sort. It keeps it very solid as well. I love the way that this whole design of this bike is. They've actually made the Rad Runners now look more sleek, where in the past they kind of had an old school curvy look. Didn't look as solid, but as you can see, that with these weld points all over this bike here, and the way that they have this made so solidly, this bike feels solid. Now it is heavier. It's about mid 70s, about 75 pounds or so on this bike here. And it, that, so it does make it a, a stronger bike. But with the trailer that can pull up to 100 pounds, you can carry a lot of load on this bike. And so it's made as a utility bike for those who possibly might be thinking about using it for delivery. I think it's a perfect bike. Now, one thing that you notice, it has a semi integrated battery that goes into this frame here. And this battery in itself here is about 14 amp hours. So for those of you that know about specs, that that's a lot of range you're gonna get out of 14 amp hour. But I did hear Rad is going to, if not already, they're actually making a secondary battery that can integrate at the same time to double your range. Now, I've heard some reviewers say that you can get up to 40 miles and plus on this 14 amp hour battery. And I'm not surprised because of the way they have the controller tuned. You're actually more efficient when you're using the bike at different PS levels and you don't need to go as high and you know use throttle as much. It's something that you have to experience between the old style controllers versus the new with the PS levels that are. Now, the other thing is that the cadence sensors that we have here, there, I think there's 12 cadence sensors in it and which makes it actually really responsive. This is one of the more responsive bikes as far as when you start to pedal, when the motor kicks in. The other thing is that the way that the controller is tuned here, you don't get a jerk like you would in some of the other bikes. It actually takes the first second or two when it first kicks in to do a ramp up. And then after that, then you, the power starts to go in there. It's really a, a well thought through design. And I think that's one of the benefits of having a bike that's made by a company that's been around since almost the beginning that really built up the industry. I mean, with their, their Rad Rovers really taking the fat tire bike industry by storm in the beginning and then everybody kind of following suit with what they got and what they made they were able to now make bikes that uh take basically if you take everybody's complaints everybody's comments and put it all together for all of their previous bikes this is what i think they their engineers just came up with this is the perfectly engineered bike off the previous rad runners and rad power bikes and everything that's actually been put together uh, with what they've learned over the years and come out with just a well-made bike that anywhere from a beginner won't be overly intimidated to an experienced rider will say this is just a nice feeling bike. From the moment that you sit on it, you'll actually feel as though it kind of fits like a glove. And one of the reasons I'm going to point out is because of the BMX style handlebars. This gives you a lot of opportunity to move it forward and back for a lot of uh, better comfort and feel. Uh, with the bike itself here. You also have two displays, as you notice here. Now watch this, when I click on this display here, it only takes one second, you don't have to hold it for three, but then you actually can go up very quickly 
on your ranking. And then with your, your headlight, you just push it down here once. And then you've got a headlight in the front that is actually really bright. So this is midday. We're at about 11 o'clock in the morning. I push it down and then we'll see this light come on. And in the middle of the day in sunny Southern California, you can see how bright it is. Uh, and it does attract attention even during the day. So for safety wise, they actually do a really good job with that. Cable management, they've used a neoprene wrap. Uh, to me, that's fine. There's a lot of cables coming out of here. And one of the reasons being is that you have actually tectral hydraulic brakes, which is another really key feature that makes this really nice. Everybody who jumps on this said, whoa, I like the brakes. Super soft. You can basically use almost like a finger to go ahead and push it in there. Uh, Tektro is a big name brand here and you have your motor inhibitors so once you pull the brake it does shut off the motor so that you don't have it fighting against the braking. They work really great. 180 millimeter rotors is another reason why these work so well. So you have 180 millimeter Tektro hydraulic brakes with a quick release here on the front and then as we move a little higher up you have your preload adjustments for your front suspension here and you have lockouts as well if you want those put on these the front suspension works really good I really like that as well the way that it does absorb every small little bump and if you want even a softer ride you can always bring down the tire pressures so that it's a little softer there I usually run it about five psi lower than the max uh, just to get more efficiency out of the bike here but it rides so smoothly it's not a big deal now the other thing that will make this I think a little more comfortable is this seat is actually not bad. It's actually pretty soft. For the first half an hour of a ride, I really kind of don't even feel it. And then maybe about 45 minutes into a ride, I could say that a softer seat might even be better or a little bit wider. But does it need to be replaced? No. As time goes on, I would be able to get very used to it without a problem. As you can see here, we do have a tail light that actually does work as a brake light. So if I hit the brake, it does get brighter. Uh, and then also if the headlight is off it does actually just work strictly as a brake light doesn't even have the tail light on another thing is that it does have a battery meter so if the battery is taken out you can actually see how much charge you have uh, up to in 10 percent increments which is really cool a lot of them only have like four bars typically on here and here's the charging port so either on or off the bike the battery can easily be charged from here and like I said integrates very nicely goes into about halfway deep into the frame the range is like I said it's pretty incredible how much range you can get off a 14 amp hour battery now due to the technology that's being put into these these bikes some of the accessories you don't get you don't get a water bottle holder but you do get bottle cage bosses so you can use a water bottle here uh, you might get in the way of your step through with having a bottle come out so far but it's available or you can actually even have a strap on water bottle here Water bottle bag, you can get this at ebikeproducts.com. We sell this because it works on almost every bike. A lot of e-bikes don't have that water bottle holder. I would probably use this as a lock holder more than anything else. But we also have a cell phone holder. I put it here because of the BMX style handlebars. You have a lot more places for accessories. The only thing I would say that this is not going to be working well for is rear view mirrors that need to be put here. Because of the lack of distance, because of all the, uh, the switches and the... The gearing that's in the way here you're gonna to have to mount it here most mirrors will not come out far enough so I would recommend half knee bar end mirrors or any type of the bar end it literally these half knee mirrors uh, are just amazing I really like them they only take probably about literally a minute and a half to two minutes to stick on there you just pop off the end put this in screw it in and it works really well the other thing I like about these bar end mirrors is that if you happen to hit something they do break away pretty easily so that uh, it won't drag your handlebar steering too much. And then also, if you need the space when you're storing the bike, it flips in this way. Thank you to Hafni for actually sending these out. The, the flat out tire sealant also that's in here, that's another accessory I would typically say most people might want to add in. It's just added sense of like insurance against a flat tire. And uh, thank you to flat out tire sealant for sending that out. But other than that, like I said, this bike doesn't necessarily need it. The way the tire is made with the puncture resistance that they have at Rad has like, again, thought everything through. Flat tires is a headache, they put puncture resistant tires. They want a com more comfortable ride, they give you front suspension. You want a longer, nicely integrated battery, they've done a semi-integration with it with a 14 amp hour without going too fat on the frame. They've done everything so well. Even the front chain ring, being a larger chain ring doesn't give you any air pedaling. The seat to front handlebar distance 
easily adjustable because of the handlebar style that they're using. These full grips are actually really good. They do actually spin a little. They're not completely locked, but it takes a lot to make these move. So I'm not gonna say that this is really a big problem. There's a lot of bikes I've ridden where this actually will spin too loosely. This is actually pretty good. They use standard Shimano SIS shifter. It does come with this bell. Just that is part of the bike uh, accessories that come with it. I like the dual screen here where you have actually your pedal assist levels here going up and down and then your speedometer is separate. So you know where you're gonna be looking for each. Again, we have Tetro hydraulic brakes also in the back here and work really and what you're seeing here is actually a mount arm for the trailer that was added on when you buy the trailer accessory which if you are gonna you can actually put like dogs in it i guess they have a pet carrier you can put kids on the back up here the problem with water bottles when i always wanted to do it in the past is that because of how heavy they are without having a trailer keeping the the weight low the bike it becomes a lot more unstable so that actually is very helpful to have but all in all this is the Rad Runner 3 Plus, and I think I've covered all the stuff that I'm absolutely in love with with this bike. Keep in mind, you can also see that we have more mounting points here for front racks, uh, other things to carry here. And I also do believe they actually have some storage carrying things that you can also put in the middle. Along with the uh, seven speed shifting in the back here with the 11 to 34 tooth, we also have your Altus derailleur, which is really ideal, smooth shifting, from one gear to the next. And as you can see how big this high-end gear too, if you have some hill climbing to do with some motor assist, you'll be able to get that up to pretty much any other hill. I mean, you got a lot of power coming out of here. So that actually covers my review for the Rad Runner 3 Plus. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys think about it, the new design that they actually come out with it. The way that this, this whole I guess next evolution of e-bikes and the distance and the technology that's putting into it. Some of your thoughts on that because I have been utterly impressed. Again, thinking that, you know, this bike is just on the higher end of a lot of other bikes that are in the similar type of class. I think it's worth every penny um, because of the quality of parts you get and the design and the way that this bike just runs all in all. Uh, you definitely can feel the value, I guess is the best way when you're on a bike like this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.